we have our speaker here with us today, Mr. Rafael Gabmomo. I'm going to do a brief introduction of him. I also welcome every one of us here, wherever we are joining from. Um, it might be morning where you are, night or evening or afternoon. So we are delighted to have you here. And please try as much as possible to pay attention so that you can also ask your questions at the end of the section. Um, today, this section is actually on designing an app architecture solution. And we are having uh, Mr. Rafael Gabmomo who is, a, who is an experienced cloud engineer with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and service industry. He is skilled in Node.js, Haskell, Python programming, and, other, and a couple of other programming languages. He has, tech, he has experience in technical support, um, system administration, data engineering, and backend development. He has worked on a lot of solutions that have met reliability, low latency, high availability and security best practices and standards using open source tools and frameworks such as Pivota, Git, Kubernetes, and Docker. Uh, I've been opportunity to listen to Mr. Raphael a couple of times, and I can tell you that he, he knows what he's talking about and is very good at what he does. So it's a privilege to have him here with us today. Um, please know that this section will be recorded and you can always listen to the recorded section. So Mr. Raphael, uh, it's a pleasure to have you. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, Olomide. So um, I'm, welcoming, I'm welcoming you all to this session. And like I've always said, <coughs> excuse me, like as, I've, like as I've always said at the very first beginning when we started this series, okay, I believe that AZ305 is a build up of, uh, a build up from your fundamentals, okay? So you, you might be, uh, you might have been in the position where you're looking at things like event grid and you are so scared. But the truth about it is if you've, if you've passed through AZ204, you would have met those things there. So, so this is not a big, uh, uh, this is not a big humongous topic. Okay. So this, this is all what you already know. That's just what I'm trying to tell you. But the purpose, this topic, uh, we're just going to take it. We're just going to explain. Okay, the difference between this and this, difference between this and this, and how they relate. So we, I'm just trying to help you. Uh, put the pictures together okay so yeah so let's let's dive right uh right at it so i'm going to be showing you my very first slide okay so this is what we're going to be talking about we're describing the differences and all that and all. so there are things that you already know they are not strange okay especially if you pass through az204 so very Firstly, we're going to be describing uh, between uh, messages and events. How do they differ? What is a message? What is an event? How? Okay, so in, in Azure, uh, an event. So you you need to. Okay, let's let's take it like this. So if you if you're taking this for an exam, okay, I'd like you to uh, I'd like you to put your mind. Okay. Oh. Okay, what is a message in Azure? What is what is an event? So take a look at it and try to uh, know what the difference is. And that's what this uh, page is just trying to talk, tell us about. So an event is lightweight, okay? It's used for broadcasting messages that are ephemeral. So ephemeral is ephemeral as the word goes, something that is uh, that is not permanent, something that can go off. You know, it's, it doesn't stay long. So ephemeral means communication that might not be handled by any receiver according to the context of this message, okay? But uh, in the other way, something that is not permanent. Okay, so ephemeral, yeah. So uh, something that my, my, a communication that might not be handled by any receiver if none is currently subscribing. So there needs to be a subscriber for the message to be non-ephemeral. So I'd like you to, Take note of that. So an event will include uh, a publisher and a subscriber. So um, I, I part-time I train. Okay, so if you if you are attending or if you're watching this later on and you are one of my trainees, uh, I'd like you to put in your study Bibles, okay? Get your study Bible and the colored pens that I usually tell you about, okay? Event, I'd like you to mark under it, put publisher and a subscriber, okay? So now let's look at the message. So if if the only thing that you got from the few minutes I've started talking, okay. So okay. So uh, Mr. Raphael said uh, we have uh, events, events, events. Okay, event has two babies under. Okay, publisher and subscriber. 
Yeah. So now let's talk about message. Messages will contain raw data produced by at least one component and is consumed by another one. So look at the difference between an event and a message. Message is very, very lightweight, okay? Publisher and a subscriber. But on the other hand, the 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 the, the on the other hand, the event will contain data that is going to be consumed by another comment. So you have data that is going to be used by something else. You have data that you're producing here and it's going to be going to somewhere else for another purpose. So take a look at it that way. Or uh, let's let's put it in our local Nigerian context. Let's say, okay, you have palm oil, for example. Uh, maybe maybe the, the, the palm nuts, okay, will go through and and it will be consumed. It will go and be processed and be and be used by another another process to form into what you'll eventually be uh, be processed as the oil itself. So, so it concerns the data itself, not just the reference to the data. So, it, yeah. So, messages are used by dis distributed applications, and they require a guarantee uh, that the communication will be processed. So, from this very short uh, part. Um, I hope that you've gotten something. We talked about the differences between an event and a message. So message contains real raw data that will be used by another person. Event is lightweight. It includes a publisher and a subscriber. So let's move on. So we did, in the next part, we're going to be talking about how to design a messaging solution. So it's not too difficult, okay? So I'm sure that you can see from the screen so messages should usually be assessed with authenticated calls using either HTTP or HTTPS. Okay. So I think in the next in the next slide I I went into okay. So they may contain um, messages may contain millions of messages up to a total capacity of the storage account. So I try to put I try to put the differences here. So um, he, in this I try to describe the differences between. Um, these are just us storage queues and event bus okay so uh, as your storage queues are, are are good for messages that would uh involve first in first out processing okay then also storage bus would offer more advanced messaging uh such as uh public subscribe requests and so you, you just need to know that uh just just try to understand the differences okay so uh as your storage queues are suitable for simple messages okay simple messages are the ones that involve uh fifo and you know first in first out okay then for the other one more advanced messages so we're talking about the difference between um storage queues and service bus okay so now um for with regard to scalability as your storage queues offer more, uh, both of them are actually, uh, they actually scale horizontally because your application that you are designing, it will pay you more if it can scale uh, horizontally because as a business that is uh, having an app and you want to, uh, you're having an app and you're in the cloud. So one of the first things you want to look at is being able to scale horizontally. So now, so you, the reasons why you want to consider using uh, either of them because both of them can actually scale horizontally so they are they're not bad they are good but uh, as your service bus you offer more advanced scaling options okay uh, so such as auto scaling so if you want to decide Um, Mr. Gap, can you hear me? Mr. Rafael. Um, I think Mr. Rafael is having a bit of network issue. I don't know. I can't seem to hear him again. I don't know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, you can just signify so that I'm sure the network issue is not from my end.
I can hear you. Okay, I, I think the issue is from Mr. Raphael. So let's just give him a minute. Oh, uh, sure. Sorry, guys, I went off. I think my router went off, uh, but I have a backup. Okay. I just connected. I'm so sorry. So everything is back on now. Okay. I, okay. okay. So uh, before before I left off, I was uh, I was just trying to tell you that um, uh, if you're looking at scalability, uh, wh whatever you're deciding, okay. So if you're looking at messaging pattern, as your service boss would offer you, because you would there are reasons so why you would want each either of them okay so if you you have more advanced workload more advanced uh, requirements you will use service boss service boss has more advantages when when i compare with messages messaging pattern scalability even in size with regards to size as your storage queue has a limited size of just 64 kb per message that is very low compared to as your service boss that supports larger messages up to five six um uh, 556 uh, KB. So now uh, for availability, as your service boss offer more advanced uh, availability features, so that such as geo disaster recovery and message uh, duplication uh, detection. So let's look at. So uh, everything I've said in the previous um, slide is what is being shown to us in a way here. So you can see that you can see that uh, service boss the duplicate application and services from each other, okay? So the, the the reasons why you would want to use each one of them depends on your, your requirements, the, depends on your requirements and your workload and what you are trying to achieve. So I just, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not gonna go off again. Okay, so, uh, so for service bots, so, so for, for service bus queues, they, you can build them on top of dedicated messaging infrastructure okay so um they can hold message until a, a target is ready to receive them from different queues okay then for the other one uh, like they are built you can you can have multiple subscribers with them so like i said earlier on your your, your what what you are doing will determine uh the one you choose but I, i'd like to tell you again that if you 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 are here because you preparing for an exam that what you are required to know is the differences between each one of them i think in the previous slide i tried to like give you each uh, each of the differences and i think that if i was preparing for an exam uh for this i would classify them just the way i classify them here i'll look at the messaging pattern i'll look at the scalability i'll look at size i'll look at availability and we've seen that apart from availability uh, uh, service bus queue is winning in in all the categories okay, so let's uh, let's look at um yeah it's still let's it's still comparison we are still doing uh, so at least we're talking about it multiple times but with different scenarios reinforces the knowledge so we we look at we'll look at queue storage for example a simple queue okay is used to organize uh messages Okay, so and the SLA is based on the service tier. So you can queue up to 80 GB. Okay, you, you can use it to track uh, progress for uh, processing a message inside the queue. So for service bus, we, we looked at uh, a first in first out guarantee. That's first in first out guarantee. Uh, at least one message process, one message will always be processed, and at most once uh, message processing. So we have the SLA as 99.9, 99.9 is not too bad at all. So I'm not just gonna read everything from the slide, but you can see that uh, with, with regards to messaging pattern, it's not bad at all. At least 99.9% .9 is uh, of SLA is actually uh, strong. So we've, uh, we've looked at, we've looked at um, messages. So now we're looking at events, but uh, what did we pick from messages? If, if there's one or two things that we can pick from messages, well, what did we pick from message? It's not too difficult at all, okay? So let me not, um, but if, if you have any question with regard to message, you can put it in, this, in the message, in the chat window, I'll answer it, but I'll quickly go and talk about events, okay? So for events, for events, um, 
I like this one a lot because uh, in my work, every time I come across uh, solutions that require uh, big data processing. Okay, so um, and, and you'll discover that in discussions, in discussion, when, you, when you're talking about big data, people would sometimes want to shy away from uh, talking about uh, the fact that Azure has everything, everything that can be used to process data the way it should. Okay, so um, one of such uh, provisions that Azure has for us for processing of data is events. Um, yeah, it's event hub. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's, it's a fully uh, managed real time data ingestion service for processing large amounts of data. Okay, and so uh, for the other on the other side, you can see that you can it works with um, with Kafka. It works with uh, AMQ, AMQP, and you know so. Um, you can use it to uh, order events when they are received. Okay, so it is basically a big data processing platform. Okay, and it's friendly to other connectors like uh, Kafka and all that and all that. So if your your workload is in Kafka, you can still uh, use it for it. So you can see that it has. Uh, you can have up to about four partitions inside it and receivers at the extreme end. Okay, so it uses a pool model to allow multiple reads from customers. Okay, scaling is controlled by how many throughput units or processing units you purchase. Okay, so you can, it's a big data streaming platform. So that's just um, the summary of it. So um, if, um, in yeah, it's a big data streaming platform. That's just what I would say. Okay, so let's move, let's move ahead. Okay, so uh, this is, um, this is another picture of it. So, oh, this is not another picture of it, but this is Event Hub. This is Event Grid. So you need to know uh, the difference between the two of them. So Event Hub is a data streaming platform, okay, that is provided by Microsoft and is friendly to other uh, services, other connectors. Like so, so if your your data is in Kafka and other, you still be able to they will still be able to work with Event Hub. But this one is an event driven solution uh, is a is a routing service it connects data with handlers so for this one i like i like you to think about it this way you you must have a source and a handler a source is where is the message coming from and what is going to process the message so event event sources include event as your resources or custom topics you create okay so you can see on this side we have uh we can have uh as your storage, you can have your resource group. You can have so your your whatever you're doing, your 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 data, your whatever you want to process, your event can be stored inside a storage account. Can be stored inside the resource group. Can be stored inside uh, even your your media service. So you have something on the other hand to help you process to process it. So source on this side, a handler on this side. That's how uh, this one. Uh, works so it's useful for serverless application. So I'd like you to think of this one uh, mostly with regards to automation and serverless. Okay, so it's good for serverless application and it's, it's, uh, it uses a pay per operation or pay per use pricing model. So I think that um, what see here's what I would like you to understand. Okay, especially if you're preparing, uh, if you're if you're listening to this one. For, for the purpose of preparing for an exam. Just know the differences, okay? What does this one do? What features does this one have? So understand what it does, the basic features is that. So for this one, uh, like I told you earlier, think about it uh, with regards to uh, event and event source, okay? You know what source is? Where is that event coming from, okay? What is going to handle it? And also you should think about it with regards to uh, connected to automation, okay? Automation and serverless. And I think that you'll be, you'll be fine. Okay, so let's move to the next, uh, the next item. So we want to compare, uh, so uh, right here, I mean, so far uh, we've been talking and uh, we've mentioned so many things. So we've talked about event grid, okay? Event hub, okay? We've, then we have service boss, uh, service boss and storage queues. 
Okay, so you also need to know the differences between each one of them. So if you if you if you're watching this on YouTube and you've been redirected to this because you are in one of my training sessions, okay, like I would always tell you, get your study Bible, get your colored pen, okay, know the differences between each one of them, okay, I would want to, oh, okay, so event grid, or oh, what is the purpose, reactive programming, okay, uh, what kind of uh, events does it work with, or oh, event distribution, it, oh, okay, so I'll write that down, so I, 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 I write that down, okay? So know the difference between each one of them. So I just don't want to read everything um, verbatim, okay? But you see that, um, I think in, in the very first part, we talked about uh, the differences between service bus and, and um, storage queues. So you see that the, the type of messages they, pro they process, they are all, um, the types of things they process, they are all messages, okay? So one is for high value enterprise messages, and one is for large uh, storage queues are for large uh, volume uh, messaging queues. So just know you are you are just meant to know which and uh, which which each one of them uh, works with. Okay. I hope that we are cool about from from this the most cost effective one, the most cheapest one between service bus and storage queues will be uh, will be storage queues. Okay. So because they are cost effective and they have simple messaging uh, mechanism. Okay. So if you go to your Azure storage, you see that there is a place for queues there. So with Azure, Azure has built a lot of infrastructure and a lot of uh, efforts with uh, making sure that queues are, queues are cheap for you. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, so let's design a, an IoT a hub solution. But before I go on, let's see. Uh, let's see if anyone has a message. Let's see if anyone has a question. So I'm going to be checking. Uh, Olumide, does anyone have any question? For now, there's no question. I, I think it was just Tunde that said he couldn't see the slides, but I think he's able to now. No questions. Yes, on the chat. Okay, no so, go ahead. so guys, um, guys, my takeaway so far, my takeaway so far, especially if you're preparing for an exam. Uh, if you're here, uh, if you're here because you're preparing for an exam, um, you just meant to know the difference, what each, what each of those components is doing, and how, uh, yeah, what each one of them is. That just, if you know that, I think that you'll be, uh, you'll be fine. You, you, you'll be okay. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. So. So let's design an IoT Hub solution, okay? So IoT Hub, as you all know, is a central messaging hub. It's a bi-directional messaging hub for um, between your IoT Hub and the device that, that they are connected to, okay? So now, when to use an IoT Hub? When your application is, is complex or when you want to get some data throughput. Uh, so if you, if you, um, if, okay, let's let's go back a little bit. If you have um, gone through AZ nine hundred, uh, the one of the one of the labs. Uh, this is actually uh, a very big deal. There, uh, it takes a, a part of your is part of the, um, the the thing that is being tested on. So one of the labs, you were asked to uh, connect um, connect a, a Raspberry Pi that sends a message to IoT Hub. Okay, so what are you actually trying to do? Okay, so there is a bi bidirectional um, communicational uh, device. Okay, because you create the hub, you create the device in it, and take the the connects, use the device string connection string to another to what you're trying to get uh, messages from, and it it populates it populates data into uh, IoT hub. So now let's um. Let me go through uh, this. So in the diagram, you can see that we have IoT Hub on one side. We have a cloud, cloud gateway. So you provision data. So you're sending data from device to the cloud. Okay. So you can, okay. So so on the first side, you have your devices that uh, that you want to send to the cloud. Okay. So now you have the gateway where you can send uh, you can save data to your storage and you can get some insights to uh, you know to enrich 
to make reports and all that and all that. And on the other side, you can you can uh, do something with those reports that you have made. So capabilities over Event Hub. So uh, what are the capabilities that IoT Hub has over Event, event Hub? Why is IoT Hub different from Event Hub? So IoT Hub would help you to uh, identify every device because it actually messages are being sent, sensor messages are being sent. So it can help you identify which device is sending those messages. Okay, so it helps with file upload from devices. Okay, so device provisioning, it helps you to device, uh, to provision devices. So guys, in summary, in summary, IoT Hub is that, that thing where if you have a device you need to send a message from, okay, that thing that will help you uh, send and save your messages in the cloud, okay, your IoT device messages in the cloud. And it's, it, um, yeah, it's actually very, okay, let me, let me tell you a little story, a project I work on with regards to, uh, before I move from this page, I worked on a project with regards to IoT. So I have this client, my company had this client that, um, okay, the, the client is in Nigeria. So for, for, for uh, non-disclosure purposes, I'm not going to mention the name. So um, they had a group of people that, there's this group of people that they wanted to protect because of kidnapping and all that and all that. So they wanted all their vehicles to be, uh, they wanted sensors, okay? Uh, sensor devices to be installed in um, in all their vehicles because uh, some, of the, some of the staff, they are very stubborn, okay? So they said, okay, there are parts of the city you should not go to, but they will not listen because they're in love. They will still exceed those parts, okay? So the company wanted to know if, if a vehicle crosses a certain part, it should, send, it should always send messages to the cloud. So we, we installed sensors in all the vehicles. So what we did, we first of all created IoT Hub in Azure. So we created devices in Azure. So for each of the vehicles, okay, so they had so many vehicles up to more than 3,000, okay. So vehicles would include trailers, trucks, motorbikes. So, so, so each, every part, okay, every single thing that is happening to that, to that car, okay, is being tele, is being transmitted to, to the cloud. So how we did that is what I've just explained. So we created IoT Hub and we created a device in IoT Hub. So messages were being directed from those vehicles to IoT Hub. So I hope that you understand. So because of that, yeah. So um, I'm explaining because of what you see here. So you see that, so we're, we're able to get insight and if they need to take action, they take action. So I think I'm gonna move forward. I don't wanna to talk too much so that I will not go and put myself into trouble. So but now let me, because this is, this is gonna be available on YouTube. So let's move forward. So design an application optimization solution. So now um, we're gonna talk about uh, Azure Cache for Redis. So what Azure Cache for Redis does is, it stores frequently accessed data so that application can be responsive to user. So you see that there are times where, um, there are times where you, there's a particular data when you, that you use every time. So um, Red, Redis Cache would make it possible for you so that you don't go through all the stress of going to get, you know, all the all the wahala to go and get the the data, so that anytime it will start at the point for you that it's easy for you to to get and work with. So key scenarios: it to cache data for you, it will cache content, it will it will store your sessions, your job, your messaging queue, your distributed transaction, everything possible that you that your work that your application is working with. It will help you to store it. So it's a fully managed solution. So who can tell me what a managed solution is in the chat window? So let's um, let's communicate for a minute. If you are uh, if you are listening, what is a, a managed solution? 
Okay, so a, ma a managed solution is a solution that um, is being taken care of uh, to a very large extent by Microsoft. So Microsoft has staff going to work every day because of that solution. Okay, I think someone has dropped something in the chat window. Okay, yes, you're very right. It's managed by the cloud service provider. Um, okay, so I, I'm in a training. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a training. I'm in a training, I'm in a training. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. So I have a guy that, that's called me for up to five times. That's why I had to answer him that I'm in a training, okay? So, um, so as your cash for Redis helps you to be highly available, okay? It helps you so that your data, your data, I mean, you wanna get data, you're not having, uh, problems so things that you can have mentioned that things that you possible things that you can use it for your your data cache your, your content cache your session cache and all that so it's so it responds automatically to both anticipated and unanticipated changes changes in demand okay same perform it has same performance and scaling benefits throughout the world so the, the good thing about this is that um it makes sure that if you have an application okay you you want to assess you do not have uh you're not going to have um yeah you're not going to have stories okay you're you're not going to have stories you're not going to have um yeah you're not going to have stories okay uh we're using this thing for our workload our customer needs them and all of a sudden you're trying to you're trying to use that wait there's there's this disappointment so so with if you're using uh redis cash as your cash for redis this is not going to happen. So you can see this uh, the diagram on the left hand side. So you have your browser, especially if you have a web app. Okay, so your data is stored in Redis cache. Okay, so you can um, so you have all the solution all the solutions on the other hand. So instead of going instead of going every time to uh, all this all this um, instead of going every time. To go and pick all of them from from the database, yeah, from the database, you can just store it in Redis cache. It will it will reduce the journey. It will reduce the stress. Uh, how do they call it? There's this word. It will reduce the the travel time. There's a, there's a circle time. Yeah. So instead of going all that way, it will just you know it will make your application to be highly responsive. It will make you to be yeah highly available, highly responsive faster transaction, your customers will not complain, and all that, and all that. Especially if maybe there's a problem with the database, even before customer notice, Redis Cash will provide whatever they need for them, and you can have your time to fix whatever you need to fix. So let's move ahead. Okay, so uh, guys, 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 like I said earlier, okay, Azure is actually not too difficult, okay? You just need to understand what each thing is doing and how to apply it for each particular scenario. So all we've said so far is not, we've not said anything difficult so far. All, all we've been saying so far is, okay, what is this one doing? What is the difference between this and this and how to use it? That's all we've been saying. Azure is not difficult. Okay, so now we are, we are looking at a whole different uh, thing entirely. Okay, Azure API management solution. Okay, so now they will, what it does for you, it will help you to publish, secure, maintain, and analyze all your company's API. So now I like Azure because um, if you are an Azure freak, okay, you don't want to use anything outside. Azure has everything for you. So if you oh, oh you have APIs, you don't want to use uh, a a third party solution you want to stick to azure yes azure has azure api management uh for you so you can use it to bring all your apis into one single administrative management okay it will help you manage your your permissions and your access it will help you to ensure compliance across all your apis it will standardize your api specs okay yeah it will protect your apis from uh, from malicious usage okay so let's look at the diagram uh, on the left hand side again. So we have your mobile app, your business partners, your developers, your employees, your IoT devices, your web apps. Okay, so all 
trying to pass through the API management before they get to the each of the server. So API calls are routed to back that. Okay, so you can route API calls, yeah, to through the API management system before the server. So it makes it makes you to yeah make sure that um before you go through the server you pass through it and you know there is no there is no funny stories so uh, we can consider the number of api rates of api changes and api admin load i hope that this is not too difficult guys okay in summary it helps you to manage everything about apis in one single place that's just it no big deals okay let's let's take a look at this one okay so we all know what infrastructure as code is okay so infrastructure as code you you want to deploy things using templates okay so so infrastructure of code model generate the same environment every time it is applied so assuming that you have you have uh, maybe maybe you work work with zenith bank for example and zenith bank wants to uh wants to deploy uh the same solution across all their systems nationwide okay so you as the cloud engineer you do not want to uh you do not want to go and do something different in in abuja we'll come and do something different in in kaduna come and do something different in lagos so you, you can just use the infrastructure as code okay so now it's of the problem of environmental drift that's one of the very first thing that infrastructure as code will do for you it will enable teams to test application in production like environment early so you you know how how it works you can when, when, when you, you can see what you are deploying, okay, you can test run it, dry run, sorry. Yeah, dry run it before you finally, before you finally do the apply and it will be, uh, it, the, the, the infrastructure will actually be, be, be deployed, <laughs> okay. So where possible, it's, we, we always use uh, declarative definition file. So this is not, uh, this is not covering uh, infrastructure as code, in depth so if you want to know uh more about infrastructure as code please uh do join our other sessions for uh we have a group called hashi Corp user group abel kufa a hog we'll be teaching every week about infrastructure as code but yeah the, the some in summary okay infrastructure as code help you to automate your environments it solve the problem of environmental drifts okay to help your team to test applications before you deploy them and with infrastructure as code, you are using declarative definition files. Okay, so let's move and see what the next. Uh, um, okay, so uh, for Azure, for Azure, when we talk about infrastructure as code, we, you're going to be looking at things like Azure Resource Manager templates. Okay, I always like I always like how Azure makes it easy. Okay, so in some of my other training sessions, I I was telling I was telling my students how I'm able to deploy. I, I told them that okay, I can deploy a virtual machine in one minute, in one minute, 10 seconds. You told me how is that possible? Okay, so I deployed using a custom template and PM is actually even less than that time. Uh, the reason why this is because uh templates are already there, so you are only just going to add your um username and username, password, and choose a resource group. So because everything is following a template already. So that's the first one for one of the, oops, sorry. I think, uh, I, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're still talking about this one. So uh, I was actually talking about Azure Resource Manager template. So you can use Azure Resource Manager template. You can use Azure Automation. Uh, you can use Azure DevOps Services. You can use GitHub Actions. You can use Terraform. You can use Jenkins. So these solutions would help you provision resources with infrastructure as code okay so ladies and gentlemen we are almost coming to the end of this uh training for today but no big deals okay so the next one we're going to be talking about um okay so guys i, I like i like to i like to bring your confidence up a little bit okay so if you're preparing for an exam i want to say it again all you just require to know okay so this follows the this uh whatever we've said today is according to how 
the syllabus is okay so and from what i've from my research before coming here today i've seen that all you just require to know is what each one does and the, the differences so i think that if you try to understand what each one does and the differences i think that you'll be okay so as you have configuration centralizes manages Okay, so now we're talking about Azure App Configuration Solution, okay? Azure App Configuration uh, centrally manages application settings and feature flags, okay? So now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, flexible key representation and mapping is one of the things that it will do for you, okay? So um, I wish I had enough time, maybe I would have gone to the, uh, the portal to, to show you this. So it will help you to uh, fix point in time uh, replay of settings okay so the configuration in okay it will it there's a dedicated ui for feature flag management and you can compare uh two different configurations on custom defined di uh, dimensions it will help you enhance uh, security through manage identities and uh and encryption okay so what we're just trying to say here is that uh you want to manage settings you don't want settings to change okay and azure uh, has something like that to help you uh, fix that so you you put settings in one place you want to use them uh, throughout your application okay so azure app configuration solution can do that for you so it, to help you compare to on a custom defined okay so guys we are done for the lecture today okay it's not difficult. If there's anything you do not understand, please ask me and I'm going to say it. But before we go off, let's quickly take a look at this and see. Um, there are a lot of solutions that have been included. With, uh, we'll talk about, I uh, will choose one and talk about. So let's see, assuming that we have a new uh, product catalog, okay? We are ordering processes. We have a new product catalog, okay? That in, includes ordering process and shopping cart, okay? So the, the service will relay on a combination of relational and non-relational database. So you want to be able to use uh, something like uh, Azure SQL. You want to use something like a uh, Cosmos DB at the same time. Okay. Um, it is critical that the service hosting and the application supports both rapid auto scaling and high availability. So, um, so what will you use? How will you go about this? let's take a look so we have okay so i'm just going to look at okay we finished but let's oops okay we finished this okay so this is a typical solution for this is a typical solution for for the case study Okay, so your address. So the the service is actually stored uh, using Azure App Services. Okay, so we have a user that is accessing the internet. Okay, you can see the image. Goes to Azure Azure Storage. You they are using uh, Event Grid and Service Bus to process the image. We have one database. Okay, so uh, the Azure function will be able to scan for the API. I thought we we're supposed to use, um, we're supposed to be able to use uh, non-relational and relational database. But anyways, this is one solution. So there are several other ones. Um, hope that we are good. Uh, but before we move further, please let me know if you have any question and I'll answer your question. Okay, so uh, you asked for the solution. I think I will send the solution. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, we have um, we have a, a, a GitHub page. So I'm going to send a detailed solution uh, of that case study to the GitHub page, okay? I'll send it to the GitHub page and uh, we'll continue the conversation uh, in the WhatsApp uh, group. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Time is currency. We've talked a lot about so many things. We've, we've looked at uh, so many things. 
they are not too difficult. They are pretty pretty much basic. Okay, they are pretty much basic. So um, yeah, I think that you should be able to pass. Thank you for attending this lecture. I'll see you next. I'll see you next next time. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Mr. Raphael, for your time and for sharing your knowledge. Um, if you have questions, please, you can. Sorry, can someone hear Olumide? I think his network is freezing. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, uh, on behalf of the Azure Nigeria community, I say a big thanks to uh, our speaker you know, for this amazing session. It, it was really enjoyable and very informative. Thank you all uh, you know, for joining us to uh, attend this. Thank you. Thank you uh, for joining. Uh, this recorded session will be uploaded on YouTube uh, for the benefit of those that were unable to join today. And of course, learning continues. Um, we'll continue in the WhatsApp group, the GitHub uh, organization and all. So a big thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe to uh, Azure Nigeria community platform, the YouTube page, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Meto, you know, such that we can continue to uh, serve you better and provide you more information towards more Azure study series to come. So thank you all for your time. You. Uh, it's really appreciated. Thank you. Sorry, bye guys. Yeah, I bye. see that you're taking that already. Okay.